Good, happy Friday morning. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First up, New Hampshire Motor Speedway proposing three-day music festival next year. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Gene Mackin. Pay attention to the final product of a successful entrepreneur. They say things like, I can never be like them. Or a lot of spectators for the New Hampshire Motor Speedway's presentation to Loudoun's Zoning Board, asking for a special exception so the track can host a three-day music festival next year called Live Nation. Live Nation has informed us that uh, this is a country music festival with um, what what I would consider to be top-notch performers, the, actual, the absolute A-list. The Speedway says it started considering the concert before it learned New Hampshire would lose one of its two NASCAR races to Las Vegas in 2018. Now saying this is a good way to use the venue and bring business to the state, specifically requesting the town allow camping in some parking lots. Consistent with what the Speedway does really well now during the race weekends is going to happen just on those four lots for this uh, proposed type of concert. The Speedway says it already conducted sound tests, traffic studies, and hosts other recreation and entertainment events. The track's neighbors are lining up on different sides of the street. I want to know some assurances from the racetrack that they are indeed going to supervise these people. I think one time for the concert is okay with me and my husband. And then we review it. And now the zoning board says it wants to walk around and study the proposed concert site if approved. That music festival could come to the Speedway sometime next summer. Live in Loudoun tonight, Gene Mackin, WMUR News Snap. Okay, and there you go on that report. And if you live near the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. We want to hear from you. Let us know what you think about this. Do you think they should do a three-day music festival? Let us know. Search around home may be connected to Debbie Mello disappearance. Let's take a listen to this video from WCVB Boston. Yeah. In the air, you could see the backhoe digging a hole on the front lawn of number 10 Bryan Drive. I went for a walk around the neighborhood and saw all the, you know, cruises and then saw them digging a hole here and there it is when I said, what's going on? A quiet residential subdivision turned into a possible crime scene. Residents saw cadaver dogs. I saw dogs come out and they were sniffing around and they were around that big rock. Park crew was then called in and took down a big tree. I thought about stuff, you know, maybe someone from years ago that I kind of knew maybe could be in there. Word on the street is they're looking for a body that, um, for a person that went missing about 17 years ago, Debbie Mello, I believe. Five investigates confirming the dig is related to Debbie Mello's disappearance. The 30-year-old mother who lived nearby disappeared 17 years ago and was never seen again. Her husband telling police at the time he dropped her off in South Weymouth after an argument. It was all with uh, trees and rocks, boulders, yeah, you know. It, it just ended up to the street over there. The homeowners here did not want to talk, but neighbors say the family moved in a little over a year ago. As night fell, the scene was quickly cleared. Kind of crazy, you know. I've been here my whole life, you know. Well, who knows, you know. Police here tonight referring all questions to the Bristol County DDA. Now, the DA's office simply saying it is an ongoing investigation, but police sources tell us investigators will be back in the morning. Okay, and there you go on that report. We will keep you updated as we get more information.
earthquake recorded in Casco Bay. Let's take a listen to this video from WMTW News 8, Morgan Sternovin. Technology Spectrum delivers with superior HD picture and sound and the fastest internet starting speeds for the price. Plus, Spectrum Voice lets you talk all you want with unlimited nationwide calling. Spectrum TV, internet, and voice, $29.99 per month each. Yeah, Stephen Tracy, the USGS reporting that a 2.2 uh, size earthquake was reported off the coast of Cape Elizabeth here in Casco Bay. Now, a 2.2, they say you can feel maybe some door shake. You can definitely feel it, but you don't know that it's definitely an earthquake. We spoke with some people in Cape Elizabeth earlier who, who said that. They, they knew that it's a gorgeous day, so it definitely wasn't thunder. They did know that there are, there has been some construction going on in the area, but it seemed a little more than that blast. And uh, they said they just didn't know what it was, an explosion. But now that we do know that it was an earthquake to blame um, for that. The last sizable earthquake in Maine reported in 2012. Live in Cape Elizabeth, Morgan Tournament, WTW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that report. If you felt the earthquake, please comment below and let us know. We want to hear from you. China's national arrested in Los Angeles on U.S. hacking charge. U.S. authorities on Thursday accused the Chinese national visiting the United States of providing malware that has been linked to theft of security clearance rec records of millions of American government employees. Harvey upgraded to Category 2 has it near Texas. Let's take a listen to this video from WABC. From ABC News. Sorry about that. Not WABC. ABC News. rapidly growing in size and strength, barreling through the Gulf and headed toward the U.S. tonight. Harvey becoming a Category 1 hurricane just this afternoon, 85 mile an hour winds already, and still growing. Expected to be a Category 3 when it hits. Urgent warnings going out, evacuations underway at this hour, flights already being canceled. Families stocking up for what could be nearly three feet of rain. And if the forecast is right, it would be the first Category 3 to make landfall in the U.S., in more than a decade. Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z has been in the newsroom with us all afternoon tracking this. And Ginger, where is Harvey right now? Hurricane Harvey is less than 300 miles south and east of Corpus Christi. We take it to the maps, David, to see it moving north-northwest at 10 miles per hour. In the next 24 hours, we will see again rapid intensification. And that's why the track takes it into that hurricane-warned area as a Category 3 major hurricane. Those hurricane watches and warnings have been up. And now you see the track taking it through the weekend, staying at Category 2 through the afternoon on Saturday, making a U-turn back toward the Gulf of Mexico, and then going north and east. We could be talking about this storm, David, through the next midweek or beyond. And that's why that local 35 inches is up in that white area. It is a 10-plus region, and why rainfall and flooding are the number one in impact as far as life and property loss. And then you see storm surge, 6 to 12 feet, waves up to 20 feet in the wind warning. They're saying locations could be uninhabitable for weeks or even months. But we cannot underscore it's the rain, up to 35 inches Correct. of rain they're talking about right Days now. on end. All right, Ginger, thanks. Ginger Z leading us off. Texas, of course, right in the path tonight.
The first significant rains begin tomorrow morning. Outer bands already being seen tonight. Evacuations underway. Also a state of emergency in parts of Louisiana at this hour. ABC senior national correspondent Matt Gutman is already in the storm zone. With Hurricane Harvey's outer bands already gouging the coastline, the Gulf Coast is in a frenzy of boarding up, sandbagging, and fleeing. A mass exodus now underway in several Texas towns, including Port Aransas, where there's a mandatory evacuation tonight. The storm whipping itself up from a tropical depression into a full-blown hurricane in just a few hours today, triggering alarm bells from Corpus Christi, Texas, to New Orleans, and some very stark warnings. We are going to, in the strongest possible terms, encourage the residents in the low-lying areas, as they say, get out of Dodge. Helping folks get out of Dodge, airlines waiving change and cancellation fees for those in the storm's path. In Corpus Christi, they're swarming hardware stores. Folks are buying sandbags by the pallet full here, but the line to pick them up here stretches around the block. Some folks saying it's three and a half hours long. Inside Sutherland's hardware, clerks scramble. No half inch at all. The line for plywood, 30 minutes long, customers on edge. Everybody just went to Code Red and uh, we all came basically just to prepare ourselves. Yeah, I'm 65 now and I don't want to I don't want to die at 65. In Houston where the storm is forecast to dump a biblical deluge, shelves picked clean. There's no more water. Um, there's no more bread. The bread's already running out as well. Cars lining up for hours at gas stations. This is the line to get gas absolute insanity over this hurricane in new orleans earlier this month a summer squall flooded streets there's now concern the city's pumps won't be able to keep up we're in a more vulnerable space than we should be in millions of people are likely to feel the direct impact of the storm but the entire country could be affected but also in the storm's path some 20 refineries producing four million barrels of oil but it doesn't take a hurricane to wreak destruction Tropical storm Allison in 2001 caused $5 billion in damage. So let's get right to Matt Gutman live tonight from Corpus Christi. And Matt, they're talking about a storm surge of up to 12 feet. That's right, David. And just over the past couple of hours, we also felt this wind pick up here. You may hear it on my microphone. Now, initially, they were talking about four to six foot storm surge. Now it is 12 feet, meaning the water in the bay here would go over my head and the waves during the storm would be crashing well above that lamppost. David. All right, Matt Gutman already there for us tonight. Matt, thank you. We will have much more on the hurricane throughout the night at abcnews.com. And again, first thing in the morning on Good Morning America. Okay, and there you go on that report. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today. Goodbye, everyone.